Hello, welcome back to my channel. So I've entered into my romance era and I've been reading a lot of romances in January and February. And I decided that I wanted to do a small town romance vlog, mainly because I've realized that my favorite trope in romance, but just like generally is small towns. And so I read All Roads Lead Here, which subsequently started my Mariana Zapata phase, but also made me realize that I really wanna get into some small town romances. So I took to Twitter as usual and I asked for some recommendations there. I have a coworker who is a huge romance reader. So I asked her for some recommendations and I just did some general research. So I came up with five books. Two of them are Twitter recommendations. Two of them are for my coworker and one is the one that I just found myself. So the two recommendations from Twitter that I will be reading is Part of Your World and in a jam. The two recommendations that I'll be reading for my coworker is Flawless and Indigo Ridge. And then the one that I found on my own is Sweeter Than Honey. I kind of want to talk about the things that I'm looking for in a small town romance and what I'm hoping from some of these books, but I'm also going in with a very open mind. You know, I used to really love Gilmore Girls. I have a harder time watching it now than you know, back in the day when I would just watch it over and over and over again. And I also really love Heart of Dixie. And so if you've watched either of those, they're set in very small towns where the side characters are very prevalent. There's a lot of shenanigans. There's a lot of hijinks and unrealistic scenarios that I just really love. There's also a lot of tense moments, deep moments, but simultaneously there's a lot of funny, quirky moments. And of course, there's a ton of romance. There's love triangles, there's forbidden love, there's pining, there's unfortunately cheating there's second chance romances and so I really am looking for that in these reads I'm really hoping that there's going to be a lot of side characters or at least a few side characters that are very prevalent that are memorable that are close-knit with our main characters I'm under the impression that most of these are rom-coms so I would like the books to be funny but books don't make me laugh as much as television does so it doesn't really matter if I'm laughing out loud or not I'm just hoping that things are like fun I'm also really hoping hoping and looking for the town being its own type of character. In both Gilmore Girls and Heart of Dixie, I find that the town itself is a character. And that's just because there are specific locations that are very important to these storylines. I think if you took away those places, it wouldn't feel as small town and close knit as it actually is. And so I'm really hoping to see that in some of these stories as well. I'm not expecting it in all five of these books. And I'm hoping that by the end of this, I have found some new things that I love from a small town romance romance. So I think I'm going to start with Indigo Ridge just because it's the one I don't know much about, but I do know that it's set in a mountain town and I love a mountain town. Things have gone off the rails because I started Indigo Ridge and... I didn't know that this was like a murder mystery romance. This is literally the opposite of what I expected, but I'm very curious now about how it's going to end. So um, anyway, I started Indigo Ridge. <laughs> may have unexpectedly read almost three books in the Eden series. Was I supposed to read all three of them for this vlog? Absolutely not. No, I wasn't. I read Indigo Ridge and Juniper Hill in a day and a half. If Garnet Flats goes well, which it's not really going that great, um, yeah, I'm gonna keep going. And this whole vlog has been a little bit derailed, but I'm still gonna try to read the other four books that I talked about. We're just adding a few more in. So um, I'm gonna talk about them all in one cluster because I really just don't have time to talk to you when I'm reading. No, I just think it would be easier to talk about them all in one update, you know, but so in an unexpected turn of events, I actually DNF'd Garnet Flats, which is the third book in the Eden series. I felt like the couple didn't have any chemistry. And I also think that second chance romance is very hit or miss. And I know that's pretty common within the romance community that you either love it or you hate it in a book, like it works or it doesn't. And this one, I feel like it didn't work, especially when you start to find out like the reason he left years ago and like married somebody else. I don't know. I just, I couldn't get on board with it. 
it. So I decided to DNF that and instead of moving on to the fourth book, I'm taking a break from the series for the moment so that I can read another book like I had originally planned for this video. <laughs> So the deciding factor for this next book was that it's due back to the library in a day and that's part of your world. And I am 11 chapters in and I love it. I can already tell this is going to be a favorite. Some of my favorite things about small town romances and like small town shows is side characters and like the way that all the characters interact with each other. Side characters by far have to be some of my favorite things about small town romances and especially when you know that the author is probably going to write a bunch of different romance books with a lot of these side characters. That's really fun and so I am so excited that this has some great side characters and I haven't looked into it yet because I I don't want to spoil myself for anything with this book even though like romances you know you're probably expecting the happily ever after but how did they get there um but anyway i haven't really looked up anything about whether or not this is going to be a series so i'm excited because it feels like it will be it feels like there are things already being set up to future books which makes me very excited um so yeah i'm really loving this it's already made me laugh a bit i like both of the characters a lot obviously because i'm new to romance i didn't know if i really loved a grumpy male character but this character is more of like a golden retriever happy-go-lucky type of character and I'm loving it. So I do think I can go both ways with that where I like a grumpy love interest but I also like I guess it's sunshiny. I don't know he seems more of a himbo <laughs> to be honest. Also I've come to the realization that I love an age gap. I really do okay and a cougar? A cougar? I'm on board. I'm loving this experience so far you know. I'm really feeling like this might be a five star. And I've just been really lucky with the small town romances that I've been reading. The only thing is, is I feel like I'm gonna run out of them. I guess I should tell you a little bit about what this book is. Our main character, Alexa, she ends up in this small town after her car got stuck in a ditch and she got towed out by Daniel, who is the male love interest. And she ends up at a bar before she decides to go home and they end up going home together from that bar and having sex. Alexis is really into it. And then she realizes that Daniel is nine years younger than her. And so she abruptly leaves and doesn't say anything to him. And he wakes up and he's like, what did I do wrong? I thought we had a great night together. And he can't stop thinking about her. She can't stop thinking about him, but she also is really hung up on the fact that she is older than him. Meanwhile, back home, which is like two hours away from Daniel's small town, she's dealing with a really bad breakup and a toxic ex, but also like a toxic family dynamic it seems but she is a doctor like the rest of her family and her ex is also a doctor so she kind of sees him all the time anyway she has a bad encounter with him and her best friend convinces her you need to go see Daniel and so she does and I'm basically at the part where they're kind of on their first official date but they're more so trying to keep it casual they're not trying to take it too serious and daniel already knows that she's older than him and he's like i don't care and i'm like daniel yes get that cougar anyway i love the banter i'm already loving the side characters in the small town and there's a goat there's a goat the goat is on the cover that is what sold me on this book along with the rave reviews and it being in a small town but like i'm really enjoying it so here's the thing i read three and a half two and a half two and a half of the eden's book which is indigo ridge juniper hill and garnet flats is that the third one i'm pretty sure i don't want to make this the longest update ever obviously i intended to read indigo flats for this vlog and i ended up enjoying it a lot and moving on to the second one but mainly that's because my co-worker who recommended indigo flats in the first place for small town romance said that juniper hill is the one that everybody really loves so i wanted to check that one out as well and i didn't intend to read the 
them in like a day and a half. Indigo Hill also has a completely different vibe than I was expecting in terms of small town romance. And I think that's just because I have this preconceived notion that small town romance is gonna be like funny and quirky and like Gilmore Girls and Heart of Dixie, which obviously isn't the case for all small town romances or even like small town settings. There's a lot of like murder mystery type of small town settings, which I also love. So this kind of was an interesting mashup because it is like a small town murder mystery. So the heroine Winslow or Winnie, she is the new chief of police in the small town Quincy, which is in Montana. And she's really trying to prove herself because she's afraid that people will think she got this position because of nepotism. So basically her dad and her mom have died and her dad grew up in this town and his dad, so her grandpa still lives in this town and is the mayor. So she is like, oh, people are gonna think that I got this job because of my grandpa. But in reality, she's very qualified for this job and that's why she got it. And then you have Griffin Eden, who is one of the Eden siblings of like six. And he and Winnie have a one night stand. They don't know who one another is. They both think that they're out of towners and they quickly realize <laughs> that they're not, but they kind of continue their relationship. It's very casual. It's interesting because obviously this is a romance because their casualness turns into a serious relationship, but it's less about the romance and less about them being together. It's actually more so about the string of suicides that's happened. So Winnie ends up having to investigate a suicide that happened like her third day on the job. And she starts to notice weird things about the patterns within these suicides. So it's more so her investigating this case and like trying to solve this. It's, it's very murder mystery. There's like kind of a thriller element to it near the end, but there's also this romance. So I absolutely was not expecting that because admittedly, I didn't really read the synopsis for most of these if they were recommended to me, um, which I really need to get out of the habit of doing that because sometimes, you know, triggers exist and I'm just stupid. But by the time I got to the end of it, I was really, really enjoying it. But I can't say that it was a favorite because like, I do feel like the romance was on the back burner. They're already like casually together and they slowly just are together and it's not even a big deal. It is really focused on the murder case. And I also wouldn't say that Winnie and Griffin have like chemistry that's palpable on page. So again, this wasn't really my favorite. I think I gave it a solid three stars and I decided that I wanted to try Juniper Hill since my coworker did say that this was the one that people end up loving the most. And so this one is about Memphis and Knox and Memphis is a single mom who's moving to Quincy for the job at the hotel that Eloise, who's Knox's sister owns. But before she could take that job, she realized that she couldn't afford any of the places within Quincy. So she basically calls Eloise and is like, I don't think I can live there. I can't afford it. And Eloise says, oh, well, I have a place for you. And it happens to be on Knox's property. And so Knox and her end up having this relationship. And this one is super sweet. And I didn't know that I loved a single parent romance so much. And I realized that I do enjoy that if it's done well. And I feel like in here, it's done really well. It definitely shows the struggles of motherhood. Memphis is really struggling through motherhood. And Knox has his own issues that he's trying to work through and Memphis being there is kind of bringing up that past for him but he still ends up falling for Memphis she ends up falling for him and I just really enjoyed the relationship I did think that they had a lot of chemistry they were very sweet to one another I will say again the Eden series has kind of like a thriller element to all of these books so in the last quarter there is kind of a thriller element to the book and I wasn't really expecting it which I guess I should have based off of Indigo Ridge but Juniper Hill had such a different vibe that I didn't expect it so it is what it is I ended up giving it four stars really enjoying it and then moved into Garnet Flats which I DNF'd I will not go back to this one but I will read Jasper whatever the Jasper one is called because it is Eloise's book and I really like Eloise as a character. So my reason for DNFing it, I already talked about. It's the sister Talia and Foster who is her ex and he comes back into her life 10 years later. I think second chance romance is one of those things that are very hit or miss for me. And I think that's just kind of a general thing within the community as well. I think that if it were done really well, I could have enjoyed this, especially because what's interesting is I really like Talia as a character in Juniper Hill and Indigo Ridge, but in her own book, she really fell flat. 
and Foster was not interesting to me as a love interest in general so there was all that he's like a UFC fighter he married her best friend and so she was like um fuck you and he's like no I'm gonna win you back and um it just didn't work for me I got halfway through and I was like I don't care I don't care where this is going and they randomly have like a sex scene that was just it was frustrating because it didn't make sense their whole thing didn't make sense I felt like I got 50% in and I was like what are we doing like where are we where is this going? I don't care about Foster and the gym that he's building. I don't think Talia and Foster had any chemistry. And I felt like Talia fell really flat in this book, although I liked her struggles in the hospital because she is a doctor and she's one of the youngest doctors. And the thing she's struggling against is the fact that because she grew up in this town and a lot of the doctors like saw her growing up in this town, they're not really taking her seriously. And as a matter of fact, like one of the doctors is treating her pretty horribly. And so I enjoyed that aspect that struggle that she was going through and like trying to fight against that but otherwise everything just felt really flat so i ended up dnfing that overall i think that people could really enjoy this series especially if you like more darker romances obviously each character is kind of going through their own things in each of these books and so you get to see their perspectives and their struggles this is just a bit more serious it's less lighthearted. it's a little heavier so it depends on like what you're looking for in the small town romances but setting my expectations aside I think that this really does small town well and I especially think it's smart that she's following all of these siblings and they're all very tight-knit and even the parents are very involved in their lives and all of them kind of own different shops so Eloise owns a hotel one of them owns a coffee shop one's a doctor or one's a chef so they all kind of have their own thing and I thought that was really fun because it really brought the town to life you were getting to see these different settings and so I really really enjoyed that I think that's what sucked me in the most in this series aside from the family as well and a lot of the family dynamics you get to spend a lot of time with different family members and getting to know how this family sort of navigates each other so the town felt very real and I think that in Juniper Hill you get to know a few side characters that like work at the hotel and I really enjoyed getting to know them I actually think one of the novellas in this series is about two characters that are not part of the family so I want to read that I just I need to take a break from this series. I also think that this follows that really like male dominant trope where the man is like very possessive of the woman. I get weird about it but I try to look past it because I know that that's very common in straight romances so that does happen a lot in here if that bothers you i would not pick this up because they're very possessive overall this definitely isn't my favorite small town romance series but i do think out of all of them juniper hill is worth your time i really enjoyed that one i would definitely pick up more from this author i just need to look into if she has like more lighthearted ones or if she's just typically like a serious small town romance type of author. I know another series she has is Small Town, but I haven't looked at the synopsis or anything like that. I ran out yesterday to Barnes & Noble to pick up Part of Your World because I finished it and I loved it. It was five stars. This is actually my first five star of the year, which is weird since I've read like 22 books or something so far, but a lot of them have come close. But this is my first five star of the year. And I think that's because if you've watched the show Heart of Dixie, this reminds me so much of Heart of Dixie in some ways. Like it's not a perfect comparison, but if you like the vibes of Heart of Dixie, I think that you'll really enjoy this book because it definitely has similar vibes there's a lot of humor in here like I was cracking up through this book and I don't often laugh at books like I don't usually laugh out loud at a book or a reading experience so I loved this okay absolutely had to be a five out of five is by far one of the top romances that I've read this year and I've read a few so far I've been reading a lot of romance actually I think 90% of my reading has been romance this year which is very weird but this just like played into so many things that I love on television when it comes to romance. This just really played into it. And the fact that it was making me laugh so much and I really loved the two characters. The two main characters just were 
great and they were great together. I don't know what people usually expect out of romances in terms of if they want the ending to feel predictable or if they want the conflict of this book to feel particular or what. You know, I don't really know since I'm newer to the genre and it all is dependent on what kind of romance I think that you enjoy generally. So I can say there is a bit of predictability to this book, but I kind of feel that way about most of the romances. And I don't mean like the couple getting together. I just mean the way that things sort of pan out to get you to the point where the couple's finally like together and having their happily ever after. So there is a level of predictability here. I think the conflict is pretty easy to see when you're reading it just based off of what our heroine is going through. And so if you don't enjoy that, maybe this wouldn't work for you. But by the end, I was crying. There's a scene with the hero that I was like, oh my god, I love a sensitive little golden retriever man. <laughs> But I think what really got me is how seamless this writing style is and how it truly fit my idea of a rom-com and there was actual comedy in it because I feel like I see so many books that say a romantic comedy, a fun rom-com. And I'm like, there's no calm in this rom-com. It's just romance and not comedy. There's no comedy. It happens too often. But I was actually laughing really hard at this. I feel like the characters were really relatable and there is heavier moments in here. There's a lot about abuse within two different relationships. So our main character is coming out of a very toxic relationship, but she's still in contact and in close proximity to this man who was verbally and mentally abusive to her. And then there is a secondary character who happens to be Daniel's cousin and she is in a physically abusive relationship. And there is a scene that does show that happening. Um, but a lot of times it's just talk about what is happening to her and the bruises on her body. So there are heavier discussions in here, but to me, this felt like it had a lot more light moments than the heavier moments. But you know, I wouldn't go into this thinking this is just a light hearted rom-com because there are some pretty heavy moments in here. But yeah, I absolutely love this. Five out of five stars. So far of what I've read, this is absolutely my favorite book. But I also started in jam last night after I finished Part of Your World. And this has also been making me laugh out loud. So I don't know, I feel like this could possibly be another five stars. I might have to purchase that one as well. So in a jam, you're following Shay, who is our heroine. And she has literally just been left at the altar in the beginning of this book. And then not long after, she she finds out that her step-grandmother has died and left her her tulip farm, but the caveat is she has to be married to inherit it. So there is a year-long grace period where she can get married and inherit the farm. So because of this breakup, she decides she's going to move to the tulip farm and try to figure out everything with it and sell it since she knows she won't be getting married within a year. She runs into her old friend Noah. Noah has a farm down the road and they end up striking up their friendship again, but Noah's a little bit like hesitant about their friendship because it seems like they left on uncertain terms and he's holding some sort of resentment towards her. He's also in a situation where he is the legal caregiver of his niece because his sister is not around. And so when Noah figures out what's going on with Shay's farm and the fact that she can only inherit it by getting married, he proposes they get married because he doesn't want to see the farm go to somebody who isn't in the family since it's been in the family for like 130 years. At this point, Shay is really hesitant, but I'm sure that they're going to get married at some point in this book. But where I'm at right now, she's really hesitant. She keeps saying no. She doesn't think that that's what they should do. I definitely think that Shay and Noah have pretty good chemistry. I'm just so curious about what's going on with their friendship and like their past and why he's holding such a grudge because that part is a little bit annoying, but I always get annoyed at things like that when a character is holding a grudge for the other character and you don't know why. And you just get their internal dialogue of saying like, she knows what she did to me me or how she made me feel and it's like well but I don't tell me please tell me so anyway I'm gonna read that for the rest of the day until I have to go to work and then I will update you when I finish trying to find some peace of mind tonight I feel so low again Alone again To me you are The brightest star In the sky Oh why Do you cry Why Do you cry 
Hello, I wanted to update you because I finished in a jam last night. I enjoyed this, but I had some issues with it. There were a lot of moments where I was laughing. I really liked the interactions. I liked the small town, but I think the thing for me, it's a couple things. I really like a small town setting that has a lot of characters and a lot of those characters you're getting to know alongside your main couple. And I feel like that's not really what was happening here. It almost felt like Noah, Shay, and Jenny, which is the niece who Noah is now taking care of. It felt like they were kind of in their own little bubble and I don't hate that, but it almost takes away that small town feel. Like they could be anywhere at this point instead of in a small town. So I think for me, which I've noticed in most of the things that I love that are set in a small town. The town itself is almost a character and I do feel like these characters felt very isolated, especially because Shay had some interactions with some of the people in this town that weren't positive, like they were pretty negative. And in the end, those things get resolved, but I just genuinely felt like things were a bit isolated. Even though there were other characters involved, you didn't really know them. They were just kind of there. I couldn't remember their names if you even asked me. <laughs> I think the only standout side character is Shay's best friend and I really liked her but she doesn't even live in the small town. She lives elsewhere. She lives back in Boston where Shay was living. So I do feel that there were a lot of moments of miscommunication or misunderstanding between these characters and their intentions but at the same time they weren't like communicating those things. They weren't talking about them. Sometimes it felt like Noah thought that Shay should just know how he has felt for their entire friendship since they were teenagers. Like he, it's like he had this idea built up in his head that Shay knew what he felt and how he felt and she just ran away from it when she was a teenager. And so he's holding this like, I don't want to say resentment, but maybe a little bit of a grudge, maybe a little resentment towards her for not knowing, but at the same time, like recognizes that how could she have read his mind type of thing. So there's like this weird <laughs> dynamic of communication between these two. That all being said, while those are all the negatives of this book for me that didn't make it like a five star, I would say this is like a 3.5 star. I really enjoyed the majority of this book. I especially enjoyed the dynamic between Jenny and Shay and Jenny and Noah and just them as a trio, the way that they interacted with one another. I also really enjoyed the humor in here. There were a lot of things that made me laugh, which I think I have mentioned a couple of times. In terms of small town romances, this isn't exactly what I'm looking for. While I liked the farm aspect and there's farmer's markets that are happening interspersed within this story, it didn't necessarily feel like it was a small town by any means. And I think a lot of that had to do with the lack of side characters within the small town that you're getting to know. Um, it's very isolated isolated to the farms, the two farms that they both live on. So I don't know. I knew it was a small town and it did have the vibes, but it wasn't exactly the vibes that I love in a small town. So this is a 3.5 for me. So this morning I just started Flawless by Elsie Silver and I'm really enjoying this one. I'm only 11 chapters in. This is basically about a bull rider named Rhett and he gets into an altercation because he says he doesn't like milk. <laughs> And he punches a guy in the face. It happens to be caught on camera and he loses a bunch of sponsorships for this. So in comes our love interest, Summer, who happens to be the daughter of Rhett's agent. And she also is trying to be the face of her dad's company, but she wants to prove that like nepotism isn't the reason she's in the position she's in. So her father asks her to clean up Rhett's image. And this means that she's gonna live with him for a time, supposed to book interviews and clean up his image for him or help clean up his image. But obviously they're gonna fall for each other. 11 chapters in, you know, they're already talking about how attractive they find one another. So. <laughs> Yeah, this is really fun. <laughs> I also think this is fun because there are some side characters that I haven't had a chance to get to know very well yet because I'm not that far into the book, but I think these side characters are gonna be future books since I know there's already like three out. I think the newest one just came out. So that's really exciting because I'm already liking the writing and I'm liking the humor in here. Um, I like our two love interests a lot and I'm really liking the side characters as well. There was like a whole joke that was played on our main character, Rhett, at a bar and I was cracking up. Hello. I I just got home from work and I can't be bothered to do anything because this week has been just really busy for whatever reason. The library has been really busy on top of other things that I've been doing. And so I just decided that I was gonna come home and order Mexican food and that's what I did. And honestly, I'm really looking forward to that because I'm gonna stuff my face with a burrito. <laughs> but that's not the update you wanted. The update is I finished Flawless and I really enjoyed this one. I feel like I've enjoyed most everything that I've read in this vlog, which is really great. And 
and I think it also speaks to the fact that I just love small town romances. This one was interesting and fun because while it's a small town romance in the sense that like they do live on a farm for a time, they're also traveling a lot because he is a bull rider and she is his assistant. So they're kind of on the road a lot and they're in different places all the time, but it still has that small town feel, I think because it is the bull riding aspect and there's lots of cowboys, you know, cowboys. But I feel like it's really well balanced because they do travel, right? So it takes away from that small town vibe. But there are moments on the farm when they're up to mischief, like the brothers especially. And there's like a moment in the bar too when Summer first comes to help him clean up his image. And obviously he needs to clean up his image because he said he didn't like milk and got into a fist fight with somebody. And so there's a lot of jokes about ordering him milk-based drinks just to get on his nerves. And he is pretty good about it. Like he takes the humor well. Because I'm gonna say, I feel like some of these men in here like don't have any humor. There's just, it says it's a rom-com, but who's laughing? But in here, there were moments that were pretty funny, but I would say that the two characters together are pretty serious. Like they have great banter in ways, but it's not the type of banter that I normally enjoy. Like there's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's not as funny, I guess, and like witty, but I still enjoyed their dynamic. I really liked them as a couple. And apparently I'm into cowboys. I did have a lot of fun with this. I think there are a lot of deeper things in here than I expected. There's a lot of like deep and insightful moments that these characters kind of are reflecting on and things that have happened in their lives. And I especially think Summer's life and what she's reflecting on and trying to heal from is a lot deeper than I expected. The other thing that I really loved about this is Rhett is obviously the bull rider and he has a lot of chronic pain and it's discussed, like it's talked about and how he deals with it or chooses not to deal with it. I really liked that because I have chronic pain and so I always find it interesting when it's in books. I obviously can't speak to all types of representation for chronic pain because chronic pain is so wide and varying. So like, I'm not saying this was good or bad, but it was relatable for sure. <laughs> all I know is there are some other characters in here. There's some brothers and some really close friends that I already know they have books. Um, I don't know how long this whole series is gonna be and how many people are gonna end up getting together, but I'm very excited about the next one. And I've heard that the third one that just came out is very good. A lot of people are loving that one. So I'm excited to have this series. Happy Friday! It is such a rainy, gloomy day here in LA, and uh, apparently there's a blizzard warning. <laughs> so I 
<laughs> I don't know, you know, climate change. Yeah, but it's been raining all morning and I've been laying in bed for most of the morning, but I did finish Sweeter Than Honey and this was very cute. This is very cute. I didn't actually give you a midway check-in for this because this one was fairly short and also I just was really exhausted at the end of the day yesterday and like I said, I've been in bed. <laughs> all morning so <laughs> this is the second book in the honey hill series but the first one the synopsis didn't intrigue me as much as this one so you have our main character riley she is a baker extraordinaire and you have canton who is the love interest and he is a cop they've grown up knowing each other their families know each other and both of them have recently come out of long-term relationships but they seem to both be holding a torch for each other so they both have big crushes on one another but they don't really know it and one day riley's mom calls her and it's basically like hey I set you up on this date with this guy who Riley is like mm, he's a sleazebag so to get out of the date she tells her mom that she's actually dating Canton and that they're keeping it kind of low-key just to see how it goes and her plan is that she's gonna string her parents along till right before her friend's wedding and then tell them that like things didn't work out and her hope is that she never really has to tell Canton the whole of the situation well her parents decide to come early like three months early and they are staying for three months in a rent house. So she has to tell Canton right then and there and he decides to go along with it because obviously he is like in love with her. And it's very sweet. Obviously this fake dating relationship turns into something real. So in terms of small town setting, this was perfect. And I feel like this really gave you that vibe of like, I don't know, Gilmore Girls or even Heart of Dixie because a lot of the side characters were hilarious and very well fleshed out characters in and of themselves, but also within both of these characters' lives. Also, Canton is a police officer, which I don't really love police officer love interests, but this one was funny because in the very beginning when you meet him, he's chasing down one of the residents of Honey Hill who's driving like a Barbie Jeep and he souped it up and it was like going 60 miles an hour. So there were really funny scenes like that and between characters and even the beginning of the book starts out on a hilarious note. So I feel like this book really captured what I love in like Gilmore Girls and Heart of Dixie and like those small town shows and those small town settings. I also felt like that was really reflected in Riley's decision to lie about who she was dating. It felt very much like an episode of Heart of Dixie or Gilmore Girls because this is something that one of those main characters would do just to appease their parents or to get out of a situation not really thinking of like where is this going and what are the consequences of me lying about this thing? All of the characters are really funny. This one made me laugh way more than any of the other books that I've read for this series so far and the characters are the most memorable to me. It definitely made me want to read the first one a little bit more. Also something I think that this did really well which you know a lot of the books that I read for this vlog did as well but this one I think it was such a good balance between the shenanigans happening and the really serious nature of like things going on with their family but more importantly the healing that Riley and Canton have been trying to do based off of these relationships that just ended. I think the seriousness balanced with the funny really made this such a well-rounded book for me and it just captured that small town charm so well so I'm excited about this series. I'm excited to read more by this author. So to wrap up this review I think that Canton and Riley had really great chemistry from the very beginning even the opening chapters when they first see each other and are like having a little bit of a dinner before she has to spill the beans to him that she <laughs> said they were dating. They have really great chemistry and they're really sweet to one another and like I enjoyed the progression of their relationship and them coming to realize that both of them have a crush on one another. But anyway, I would give it Sweeter Than Honey a four stars, a solid four stars, and so I'll probably pick up the first one. So just for fun, I wanted to rank my enjoyment of these small town romances and the ones that I think did it the best. I think this one might be a little bit shocking, but I do think that Sweeter Than Honey actually captured the small town vibes that I love the most from TV shows that I watch the best out of all of these books. And then it would have to be part of your world. And I think the reason for that is part of your world is set in two different settings and one of them happens to be the city and one of them is a small town. So in reality, it shouldn't be number two, but I do feel like every time we were in the small town, it captured it in a way that I really enjoyed, especially the dick pic scene. If you know what I'm talking about, that was hilarious, okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> I would then have to say that the Eden series is number three because I do feel like the small town vibes are really there. These ones just aren't as funny and quirky, but if you're just looking for a small town vibe, like there's a lot of interconnected characters and there's this big family and they live in these more rural areas, I think that you would enjoy this one. It's just not as quirky and funny, but it's definitely giving that small town vibe. It's just a little more serious small town because there is crime happening. So it's a little bit different. There's a more serious tone to it, but if you like those more serious small town vibes, then this would be perfect. That's why I think it's number three is that like, I'm obviously looking for something very specific, but I marathoned all three of these. They did something for me. And then I would put Flawless at number four. I feel like the Eden series and Flawless could go back and forth between my ranking. They're more so traveling around because of his bull riding competitions. And so it's a little bit different because it's not really set on that farm in that small town the whole time. It's all over the place. You are interacting with the same type of characters and there's a bar scene in here that definitely gave me those small town quirks funny vibes. There's a lot of side characters and siblings in here that give me what I want in terms of the character interactions. And then last on my list is In a Jam. I think that that's controversial because it does do the small town well in ways. But I feel like the characters, the side characters, are never fleshed out enough. I didn't really know them. I didn't really care about them. I only cared about Shay's best friend who doesn't even live in the small town. Although I'm curious if there is going to be another one in this series and she is going to be one of the heroines. But that being said, I think I said it in my review as well. This felt very isolated. It felt very isolated between the love interest and the niece who our hero is taking care of. And so I just while it was giving small town i don't know the characters that we got to know or even had any time with other than shay's best friends were like not people that you wanted to know i felt like you had really small glimpses into some of the side characters that like shay started to work with and then the one time she goes out to the bar with some of those side characters it turns into um a really shitty situation. I wanted more from the small town and a lot of these workers on these farms. So yeah, I had so much fun reading all these small town romances. I did kind of burn myself out this month. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to start a new book yesterday and I like was not interested in anything across all genres because I feel like I burned myself out. I read these very much back to back to back to back. But if you have any small town romance recommendations that you think that I would like, please leave them down below. I have so many on my wish list that I can definitely do a part two to this and I love y'all's recommendations. I often feel like you know me better than I know myself. So I would love your small town recommendations if you have any. And if you've made it this far and have nothing to say, please leave the cowboy emoji in the comments below <laughs> or the little emoji wearing a cowboy hat. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.